To begin setting up our 2D animations in Blender, we need to make sure that we have the proper preferences selected. So we're going to open up Blender and choose Edit Preferences. You want to make sure that Input tab has the keyboard set to Emulate Numpad if you are working on a laptop that doesn't have a separate numeric pad. You can also choose to emulate three button mouse. That's dependent on your system. I'm using a trackpad, so I will be using emulate three button mouse. Very important thing before we start doing 2D animation is to enable images as planes as an import. To do this, you'll click on add-ons. You'll search for planes and you'll make sure that the checkbox beside Import, Export, Import Images as Planes is selected. Close your preferences, they'll automatically be saved. Now we can create a new 2D animation workspace. I've created my storyboard animatic in a different application, and now I'm bringing it into Blender to use as a reference point for the eventual animation that I make in Blender. How'd I do this? I started out by choosing File, New, 2D Animation. That gives me this 2D animation workspace. I've imported my animatic as an image by choosing Object Mode and then Add Image, Images as Planes. You can also get this from File, Import, Images as Planes. That allowed me to choose the animatic and mp4 file and now when I scroll through my timeline when I scrub in my timeline my animatic plays back for me to use as a reference image so I'm going to get the animatic to a position where I don't have an intro animation and this is where my static image begins and my character animation starts and I'm just going to be importing planes now when I'm importing these planes they're going to be the artwork that I've used in this animatic they can be whatever artwork you've created if your animatic is just a sketch or something that you're using as reference that's great you have new artwork to pull in you will choose add in an object mode image and once again, images as planes. You can grab them one at a time or as a whole group. I'll start with the trees. I'll just add three trees for now. And I'll use G on the keyboard to move them around. S on the keyboard to scale them up. You can select each of the imported planes in your layers menu on the right hand side. And each time you select one, an orange box will appear around it to show that it's selected. Hit S on the keyboard to scale up, G to move it around. Like I have an extra tree here. I'll put that off to the side. You can make your objects invisible by just hitting the little eyeball. Punch the little eyeball on the right hand side of your layer to make it invisible or visible. And you can also choose this little tab on the right hand side of your screen. That'll give you your transform options. Your tool options and your view options right there. So that's kind of handy. When I do that, I can actually select my animatic background and lock off all of the layers so that it doesn't move along with the other objects. So I don't accidentally select it and move it. Now that I've placed all of my elements into my scene, I can start rearranging the three-dimensional position of them. In the case of our 
camera view in our 2D animation workflow. Our X axis controls the horizontal in movement and our Z axis is for up and down vertical movement, which leaves our Y axis. Our Y axis is the one that controls our three dimensional axis. So I've imported my far back mountain background and I've placed that a little further behind in my three dimensional scene. I'm going to turn or make my animatic invisible for now so I can see the other elements. And I'm going to start just adjusting the Y position or the three dimensional position in my scene of the various elements. So the furthest back hill is this one here. I'll select that hill. I'll use G on the keyboard for move and then Y to constrain it in three dimensions. I have two trees that will follow that hill into the background a bit. I'll select it in my layers panel, hit G on the keyboard and Y to constrain the three-dimensional movement. I'm going to place it just a little bit ahead of the hill. And whenever I need to return back to two-dimensional view, I'll just hit zero on my keyboard. You'll also notice that when I place these objects further back in my scene, that they're going to appear a little bit smaller than original in our two-dimensional view. So if I turn on my animatic, you'll see that that tree and hill that I've moved are, they appear smaller because they're further away from the camera. Now we can adjust that in the camera lens, which we'll visit later on, or at this stage, we'll just increase the scale of those objects. Now to start animating based on my animatic, after moving all my images in 3D space, I've taken my animatic background, the one that I'm using as a reference image. I've unlocked the transformation so that I can move it, and I've just dropped that image back in 3D space using G on the keyboard to move it and Y to position it in 3D space. I've moved it just ahead of my mountain backdrop as I won't be actually repositioning the mountains. They're good where they are. I'm only repositioning the trees and hills in front. When I go back to my camera view after moving my animatic in three dimensions, I had to resize it so that it fit within the camera view window. Now I can start moving my trees and hills to properly match the animatic that I'm using as a reference point. I'll start by moving the trees and I'll go to frame zero and hit I on the keyboard. When I have an object selected, that's going to allow me to insert a keyframe into my timeline. So in frame zero, I've hit I and I'm going to choose location, rotation, and scale. That is going to make a keyframe for each one of those parameters. I'll just select on each one of the objects within my scene and do the same thing. Hit I on the keyboard to set the initial keyframe and choose location, rotation, and scale. I'm doing this for all the objects that I'll be moving. Once I've set that initial keyframe, I'll go down to the timeline and choose Dope Sheet. That will allow me to view the keyframes that I've set for all of these objects. That initial keyframe in key zero will be one that I want to keep for future reference. So I'm going to move to frame one and this is where I will begin the animation. I'll select the tree that I want to move, or the object that I want to move, and once again, I'll set my initial keyframe. So that's I, and then location, rotations, and scale for my keyframes. Now I'll move the animatic to the point where it stops the animation, and I'll set another keyframe. So what I've essentially done is, is created two keyframes. One at the start of my animation, and one at the end of the animation. This is called pose-to-pose -pose animation. I'll go back to my frame one, 
and I'll resize this tree to match the one in the animatic. I'll resize and move it, actually. S to scale, G to move. Now we have to remember, whenever we move an object, within our timeline, and we want to set a keyframe, we have to set the keyframe after moving the object. So I've moved my object, hit I on the keyboard, choose location, rotation, and scale for my keyframes. If I don't set the keyframe after I move the object, the keyframe will not be saved. Continue doing this for all the rest of your objects.